Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And I am here with Dr. Paul Winner, and he is the Senior Director of the Premier Research Institute and the Directory of the Memory Disorder Center. Um, And Dr. Winner, you have been so amazing. We have spent an hour so far. We've got one more segment to go talking about breakthroughs and Alzheimer's disease, clinical trials, how we are now able to diagnose so much more and treat so much more. Um, You know, I I don't know when I have felt more optimistic in in talking to you than than ever about a cure for this disease. So you just made my day today so far. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. But We've been through research for a very long time uh, here at Premier Research Institute as part of Palm Beach Neurology. We, most of our patients in research are actually the patients from our practice. Mm-hmm. We've been doing the best we can to try to help them. It has been hard. It has not been easy for many years, but things have changed about three years ago. We started to get a much better understanding of this illness. We had some of the right medicines, the monoclonal antibodies to remove amyloid, we just didn't have the right dose. And we were studying them for too short a period of time because we didn't understand the disease and what was happening. That has changed. We now understand to use the higher doses. We have a better handle on determining what side effects will occur in what patient. So we have biomarkers that let us know this is an Alzheimer's patient. This is a patient who has this genetic profile. This is the right study for them. This is the right monoclonal for them because we already know the paradigms. We didn't know that many years ago, but we do know that now. And now we're seeing that we need a little more time. Patients have to give us a little more time. The medicines are working, but many of them take a year, two years to really show that clinical response that we want to see. So that's Mm -hmm. very important. And that's part of learning and educating. But probably the most important thing to take away is that it's not just one or two medicines anymore. We have five different classes of medicines, two others under study as well. What I'm saying is it isn't going to be one medicine. It isn't going to be one class of medicine. We are going to use multiple medicines depending on the situation. Patients who are very, very, very early, we've diagnosed essentially using biomarkers and the early risk factors, we can basically treat them probably with one, maybe two medicines. Patients who present with mild cognitive impairment, two or three, depending on the situation. People with early or mild Alzheimer's, maybe three or four. With moderate Alzheimer's, more advanced, we may have to use everything we've got to do it to get a hold of this, because we know we can now pull out the, the toxic amyloid, pull out the toxic tau. We can stop the progression of essentially the formation of the amyloid, Mm -hmm. some individuals, we still have to work on that. We can uncoil, or it looks like we can uncoil some of the amyloid and others. So we're gonna pick this menu. We're also seeing some medicines we use for diabetes seem to be somewhat neuroprotective. So that's very interesting that that could also play a role. You don't have to have diabetes for these studies, we're actually seeing in non-diabetics as well as diabetics, we have two different studies, Mm -hmm. to see whether if we use that, can we also be neuroprotective? But a very exciting new targeted therapy has also been under study now for a few years in our site. It's called Athera 1017 or FOSCO. In this, this molecule actually binds through a MET receptor system to do three key things. It is neuroprotective, one of the things we've already seen. It decreases inflammation, a very important point of fighting this illness to stop progression. And it does something else. It helps the nerve cell to communicate with other nerve cells, neurogenesis, somatosensory genesis. Mm -hmm. So what we see is increased connections between nerve cells. And that's very important for what we consider improvement and ultimately recovery. So all these things are very optimistic, but they're early. Now, the ACT study is done. We've done the first six months of the study, and then people are in open label now. 
What's right. nice is the majority of patients have moved to open label and we're very optimistic. Some of the initial data has given us very optimistic data to show that less nerve cell damage, even in that short period of time, was seen with this molecule. So these are the things we're looking for. And these are the very hopeful signs in the research that we have now. But people have to understand, we're going to have to use a menu of medications depending on the situation. But the very first thing you have to do is get diagnosed correctly. So yes. if there's any history in your family of dementia, even if it wasn't diagnosed as Alzheimer's, you need to be evaluated if you're 50 or older, because that's where most of our studies start. We may even go younger than that. Definitely by 60, you need to start to be evaluated to see if there's any, if you have those risk factors in your family. If you're not, and your family's lived to 105 and no one's ever had dementia, you may not be at risk. Still not a bad idea though, to get at least by 60, 65, start getting an occasional neurobehavioral assessment, mm -hmm. get a baseline of where your cognitive function is, get a baseline of how your brain is working. We have something called an EVOX. It's a very easy machine. It's a much more sophisticated machine than an EEG. It gives us processing speed, mm -hmm. information on EEG function, and we can get a kind of a brain mapping kind of concept. Mm -hmm. We get an idea of where the brain is that day, made it to the cognitive issues to your history and physical exam. Very nice baseline. Yeah. That I'm curious. That started to be done now on everyone at risk, but even not, not at risk, because mm -hmm. we don't want anyone to get this illness to progress. Sure. We want slow progression. It's called disease modified therapy. That's what we have. We do not have disease stop, but we have disease modification. Mm -hmm. And you need to get di people diagnosed early mm -hmm. and into the system so they can get the best possible outcome. So I'm I'm just wondering with this new research, I can envision that this will this cognitive test should probably happen on everyone once they turn 55. I mean, that should be like a blood work or anything like that when you go to a doctor. I mean, do you envision that happening in the future? Without a doubt. Um, it's going to be like we do with cardiology for cholesterol. Yeah. We're going to check if you have amyloid. Um, yeah. And basically, I alluded to this in an earlier segment, we have very good serum biomarkers. They're not quite as good as a PET scan for amyloid, but they're close. Mm -hmm. They're a little expensive and hard to do right now because we don't have enough machines in the country. But once we you know, basically get to that point, they shouldn't be mm -hmm. as expensive and they can be used as a screen. Yeah. But you can't just use a biomarker. A biomarker tells you it's there and just amyloid alone doesn't say you have Alzheimer's. If you don't have amyloid, you really can't have Alzheimer's. No. But if you do have amyloid, it just says you have amyloid. Now you have to go further and prove, is that just a small amount? Because a lot of us have a little bit. Is it a, a pathologic? Is it another entity? There are diseases with just amyloid alone. So you really, that's the start of getting an accurate diagnosis. So sure. no amyloid, you're safe. You don't have Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Amyloid present doesn't mean you have Alzheimer's yet. Doesn't mean it's going to be bad yet, but mm -hmm. you do have to follow up. You can't just yeah. forget about that because we can take it out and get you better if it is something significant. Right. And, and certainly to think about, you know, by participating in a clinical trial like this, you're getting the, the state of the art, right treatment right with you but more importantly um there's going to be things they're going to discover about you with these advanced tests and things like that that you're not going to get in regular treatment is that correct i'm making these assumptions that when you're in a trial there's a you have the ability to a lot more things right now the most advanced evaluations and the most vast treatments are inside the research um, we are still recruiting for this new targeted the Athera 1017, the Fosco, we are we still have some recruitment going on. We're pretty close to finished. And it's basically called the LIFT or 201 study. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are still recruiting for that. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also recruiting for many of the other studies as well. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you're right. Right now, we can, all these biomarker tests, different ones are done in different tests for different reasons. Um, many of them, you get a PET scan or a tau scan. Some you get both. Some you get the whole thing. Some you just get segments that are needed to prove whether the medicine is working or not working. All of them have neurobehavioral testing done 
serially throughout to see how you're clinically doing. And mm -hmm. that's, it's important to have the biomarkers. We need them to know what we're doing treatment wise, but what's more important than anything, how you're doing, how you're doing. Absolutely. And we can monitor that. How are you doing with your family? How's the caregiver doing? You can't just use medicine alone as well. You still have to do exercise. You still have to do diet. You still have to control the blood pressure. It's like any chronic illness. This is a neurodegenerative disease, a chronic illness that has to be fought at every single level. And you have to support the caregiver, the family, and you have to obviously keep the patient as number one. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, as a caregiver, I remember taking care of my mom and the greatest support network I had were her people that cared for her. They helped me understand. And there was times that I wanted to be so accurate and everything. And if she'd give the wrong answer to a question or whatever, I'd want to jump in and correct her or make sure. And it was like, you know, there was such a weight off my shoulder when a healthcare professional came to me one day and said, Suzanne, guess what? The truth is pretty much irrelevant in this case. In other words, we know, we know what's going on with your mom. It's okay. And you don't have to do that. And it gave me permission to be the daughter, to be the person that just helps them to support them. And I think that's really was the true opportunity that I had by participating in programs similar to this. And certainly I am such a um, advocate to for these types of trials. And I hope like crazy that if anyone is listening, um, you know, listen to Dr. Winter, and we're going to give his information at the end of the segment. But I also want to mention to each and every one of you about Athera Pharma. They do have some openings with their trial for in its Dr. Winter. It's moderate to mid, or mild to moderate stage. Mild to moderate Alzheimer's. So these yes. are people that are clearly clinically showing the illness. There's no question something's wrong. Okay, and so that is uh, you can visit at https colon double slash lift, L-I-F-T hyphen A-D trial. That's A-D trial, T-R-I-A-L dot com. That's L-I-F-T dash A-D-T-R-I-A-L dot com for more information. And in the meantime, Dr. Winner, how do we reach you? Um, the easiest way is to call me at 561-851-9400. That's area code 561-851-9400. Or reach us through our website, Premier Research Institute. That's P-R-E-M-I-E-R-E, -E -E, researchinstitute.com. It has been such a joy to have you with us on this amazing topic. You, you totally made my day. I want you to know I have never felt more optimistic about something that has always been grim that we deal with each and every day in my work. And um, I am so grateful you took the time. So thank you so much for today. My pleasure. Anytime. Happy to help. And to each and every one of you, that wraps up our segments with Dr. Winner. And again, if you're interested in participating in the LIFT trial, according to Athera Farmer, that is HTTP colon double slash. L I F T hyphen A D T R I A L dot com. That's lift A D trial dot com with a hyphen in the middle. And we're looking forward to having you back hopefully someday soon, Dr. Winner. I'd love to have you back. It'd be my pleasure. Thank you. Those of you that are listening, thank you so much for sharing this hour with us and talking about the promises that is happening with Alzheimer's disease and with all ty types of dementias and also how we can help your family navigate this very complicated journey. So until next week, everyone, be good to each other. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.